Uh, in, before to speak with free paraphernalia, we have to speak first in free firmness that we are using. Well, <coughs> uh, everybody is uh, thank, thanks in the aid of uh, integrable models to this paper of Onsaga in 1944, which is actually is a 33 pages of full of force, very tough paper. And the question is, uh, how did Onsaga find the solution? Well, much later, after this projection, he, he showed that actually he arrived to the solution because he just picked up this very, very small chain, two to the infinity, just a four by four transfer matrix, and uh, diagonalized, and then did by three to infinity, and so on. And when you arrived at the letter six, we verified that the 64 eigenvalues by hand was in this form here. And then you say, come on, there is something here. And this was just the underlying uh, product algebra, which was the main thing in his derivation. OK, <coughs> this is exactly what he saw, the is underlying structure of free fermi. Um, well, the simple example of free fermi is easy to, to, to show. is just to consider the Eisen model in this quantum version. Uh, related with the transfer matrix, which is given by this, where this parameter lambda plays the role of inverse temperature. <coughs> and we have Pauli matrix here attached to the site of your L sites chain. And here we are just speaking with an open chain. And this is well known. This today we solve this by simple Jordan Wigan transformation. And if you look to the two to the power L eigenvalues, they all of them has this formula here, plus addition of some numbers, which in this case are just integer numbers, and that's it. So, and in particular, in the case where lambda equal one, where this model is critical, you get this number just simple uh, cosine number. Now, this means if you look at this formula, we have to combine those those pseudo energies here to produce the eigenvalues. So we can see pictoric, pictorically like that. The ground state are just the one that we pick up the smallest energies here. And then when to get excited state with one particle, we promote one of them to this side and the other and the other. If you have two particles, we go to the other side. But in this picture, always you see, if you have a particle here, you cannot have one, one here. And if you have one here, not there. So you have some sort of exclusion. This is the fermion nature of this free fermion uh, picture. Now, uh, actually, <coughs> this model is, is linked. Uh, we know very well that the, the finite size uh, spectrum of these systems is rallied by the underlying conform field theory, which uh, we have predictions, very important prediction here, uh, de derived by Cardi, probably I should also mention here, Affleck. And, uh, and uh, the ground state energy for the finite size chain, you have the book term here, you have a surface, in the case of Apple, open boundaries, and this next coefficient here is given by this number here, where you have this C is the central charge of the underlying conform field theory, and the psi is just a scale, it's just the sound velocity. Moreover, if you look at the spectral excited states, you see all of them has a finite size scale with amplitudes, which depends uh, apart from this uh, sound velocity. Also, a lot of dimensions, and, uh, uh, and those are dimensions are related with the conformal dimensions of your uh, conform field theory. And uh, <coughs> for this particular case of the Eisen case, you can see easily that this bulk energy is minus 4 over pi, the free energy is that, and the central charge is 1 half. You have, in this case of open chains, these dimensions appear in a lot of them. Okay, this is just the fermion, the simple fermion case, free fermion, and uh, we have that. Now, let's consider generalization of this because we want to go in the direction of, of paraphernalia. And then what we do is just consider the generalization of Pauli matrix, uh, ZN matrix, that uh, 
Perk likes to say that who introduced that was Sylvester in the 19th century. Okay, was that right? And, uh, and, uh <coughs> and in the simple case, uh, well, these are metrics in the basis where we choose Z as diagonal. It's, it's something like that. Was this omega as the n root unity? And uh <coughs> omega, yeah, power of this are the u roots of unity. And uh, this x are non diagonal. For example, in the case of n equal 3, you have these two generalizations here of sigma x and sigma z, standard spin one half model, spin one half matrices. Well, if you look, those matrix, the powers to the n is give the identity, and you have this, uh, this property here as a consequence of that, and uh, you have this algebra, which is the Zn algebra. So these are the generalization of model that we are looking and trying to, to reach this parafermionic structure. Now, the question is, uh, what are the models with these symmetries that we know that are integral in the Young-Baxter sense? So the general models that are known to be integral in this sense are just given by the set of metrics here where now we define x, j, and z, j by a set of identity uh, metrics and an operator in a certain position where we, in index a or you put x or z. So it's a standard thing. And the, the Hamiltonian that are known are just sort of homogeneous because they don't depend on j here models, they have that. You have the lambda and you have some coefficients here. And these coefficients will define the models we know that are integrable. Okay. Uh, the first one is the POTS model here. And actually, yes. I'm not seeing this anymore. Ah, here. And when the all those coefficients are one, so look at here. If you have all of them one, this is just the standard POTS model. Actually, when we say integrable, I in this case, they are integrable only at the critical point. Okay. Hmm? Lambda equal one, yes. And, uh, <coughs> and uh, okay, the other example is when we have this, uh, this set of a n instead of being one, they depends uh, on the particular index n by this expression. And this is our the Fatiev zamolog of Zn parafermionic model, and uh, which are interacting parafermions. And uh, uh, another set that I know uh, are the n-state superintegrable uh, chiral Potts model, where the a n is given by this expression. Uh, all of those models are emission, has a real spectrum, normal thing, and uh, all of them reduces when we consider n equal to the recover the Eisen case. And uh, this model three, actually, uh, the model two and three for a n equal three, the three state pots model, they are the same. But uh, the chiral pots model here are different already for n equal three. Another curiosity is that this model three, the solution of this model three, although it looks like a parafermionic thing, is given terms of free fermion solutions. So it's different from the others in some sense. Now, <coughs> uh, but there is another model that uh, Baxter, uh, that uh, was introduced by Baxter in 1989 by just an observation coming from the tau model. And this model is just this Hamiltonian here, that uh, this Hamiltonian, which different from the others in not homogeneous in general, you can put any arbitrary alpha and gamma, but you don't have the emission part of those objects, so they are not emission anymore. And this model uh, has, has the interesting point. Uh, for the case n equal two, for of course they recover the Eisen model, but uh, uh, in homogeneous Eisen model. But uh, in general, for the case, and, the, and it is defined by open boundary conditions. So it's very important to stress that boundary conditions open this case. And this model here, which is non-emission, I call attention. Uh, what you have is that <coughs> uh, the energies of this model here, uh, similarly as we have as the free fermion that you can have a particle, not you have here somehow a, 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 a exclusion circle. The possible roots you find for this problem, you have uh, are the roots shown here. 
here are the roots. And you can add of them a factor omega or omega square, so that in each circle, you can only have one particle. So is the generalization the sense of the free particle? Yes? No? It's come? No, 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 that don't come here. No. Oh, it's diagonal. I, I have that. Completely. Yeah. No, maybe. No, maybe what I said is not so correct. So it come, I know it's diagonalizable. Okay. And uh, so what I have is that I have this uh, Fermi Scruge circle, okay? And if I go to uh, n equal 4, I have here, uh, again, this circle, always you have one of possible energy here. It's interesting to see that uh, omega square, he, this, this case, is, is just a uh, minus 1. So if I pick up excitation that only contains energy in this axis, are just real, but you have also energies which are complex that came in this, uh, this uh, side here. Okay, so the, the, the general energy we have for those models are just this formula here, okay, where these p's are just integers between uh, zero and, uh, and uh, n minus one, so that you have n, uh, so you have uh, n to the power l energies as you should expect. Uh, well, actually, this result originally proposed by Baxter and uh, would be uh, was also uh, obtained in a different different way, okay, using a parafermium by by uh, by <coughs> Fendley, and he, he what he get using some sort of generalization of Jordan Wigner, uh, what I call Fladin Kadanov, that actually was used. Also, uh, this transformation for to understand the any state clock, mo clock model, and uh, oh really, and uh, also this was also considered by Baxter uh, in 2004 using these formulas by uh, Yuang and Perk in these two, and uh, actually they applied this this parafermionic approach. Uh, <coughs> to the tau, the more general tau 2 model is open boundary. Actually, this, the chiral pots model is related uh, through the tau 2 model to the six vertex model. Okay, now we are going to consider, this, this consideration is very general. You can take several uh, parameters, but we are going to consider just this simple model here with just this parameter. And uh, the idea here is to understand the physics behind this model. not working. Anyhow, so what we are going to, to, to consider here is just the simple Hamiltonian that we have just these two terms with this lambda which plays the role of uh, the inverse temperature. We can first of all to ask if the critical temperature is lambda equal one and in fact it is because you, these guys you can do a duality transformation. You can define new variables related with the xi and these two ones we define as ni and we see, now the Hamilton is just these things, but you see that the algebra between this n and xi are some algebra that they are zero if they, they are more the distance than one, and otherwise you have just this factor here. So, and because of that, oh, I need the other one to change, no? And, uh, Yeah, and uh, so the Hamiltonian here, you see you have this symmetric form, and actually you just change these two variables, xi, what's oh, not working, uh, you just change this, this two variable, and this Hamiltonian turns out to be that one, which means that you have the relation here, if you compare, that means that if you have a single critical point, this point should be lambda equal one. That we believe is the case. 
So this model is critical, this simple model, and the, the eigenspectral is just given by this formula here, this, this summation of these pseudo energies, and these energies are just given by solving this determinant, and uh, you can work out this epsilon j, the, the energies that you get from this, these pseudo energies, are just given by this object here, where this kj satisfies this condition here. So it's a very simple thing that you know everything, and you can build up all the eigenspectral. Just uh, put fully, fully uh, consider this circle, uh, you know, that you put only one particle uh, in each one. So, so what you have is just uh, the to solve the things for to find the case. And in the case of the critical case, that lambda equal one, this case is very simple to solve, like that. And uh, the energies are just this object here. Uh, where you say that when you put n equal 2, you just get the result for the Eisen case, but this is general. Now, the ground state energy of the system is just the summation of these guys here. And uh, if you just use an euler maclaurin form, it's very simple to see how this goes. And you see that the, the, the infinite energy is just given by this expression here where this is gamma function, and <coughs> the free energy is related with that by this expression. And what is interesting here is that this factor, the 1 over L correction here, is goes with nu, which is 2 over n. That means that only for n equal 2, you may have conform environments, because you don't have a relativistic expression in general. So it's some sort of different models that you don't have conform environments. So, uh, okay, if you look at the excitations of these guys, okay, that we are going to see, but uh, we look at for general temperature first. We go a little bit out of the critical temperature. So the Hamilton is like that. These are the energies, as you say, like before, that we can write some expression like that, but the important one is this expression that we already wrote that we have to solve. To solve that, to have an idea, pictorically, these are the equation. If you are at lambda equal 1, the left side of this equation as a function of k gives lines. And when you choose just lambda equal 1 there, you have this line, and those are the roots. That's the way you do it, uh, the system, the solution of, for this system. In this case, for lambda equal 1, uh, it's very simple to get analytically these this this kj's here, these functions. But we plug on in the... In the cosine and get the pseudo energies. Hmm? Pardon? Temperature is inverse of lambda, so lambda is equal one here. Okay. Now, if you are with lambda very close to the temperature, uh, one of L square, if they are smaller than that, that means you are in the, the high temperature, and then what you get, you get the roots like that. You have all the L real roots here that you produce the pseudo energies that you combine to get all the, uh, the spectra. And, uh, but if lambda is bigger than that, so you are in the low temperature, what happens is that you have L minus one real root, but one of the roots is complex. Okay, you miss one. And, uh, <coughs> and uh, so uh, for L lambda l uh, less than one, the first case, you can you can just uh, make an uh, assumption of this formula here, and then what you get is that this kj, kj as one of L gives this ex is given by this expression, and you can work analytically. But if lambda is bigger than one, you can work also L minus one root. But the, the missing root, if you write as kL plus pi by, uh, plus yv, you have to solve this expression here, and this expression gives this energy here. And, and you see clearly that you have exponential L minus and log lambda because you are in the low temperature phase and then you have a gap that's proportional to, okay, exponential of minus L. So this is what you, you would expect. And actually, since we can put this, uh, this pseudo energy in any of the branch, you have the any state, any degenerate state, which means the symmetry breaking of the system. You have what you expect for low temperature in the system. Now, if you look at the mass gaps, now, excitation in the region where lambda is less than 1, if you look at the roots, 
And what you get, that the energies, this mass gap, is given by this expression uh, when L is goes to infinity. And uh, so you see that the, 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 the in front of this epsilon p, you have a complex number times this. So the gap, well, in the case, the Eisen case, this is just the one minus lambda. But this implies that actually the, the new exponent, new perpendicular, actually, is just given by 2 over n. Again, only this should be 1 if you would expect something like the uh, conformal thing, OK, or even not conformal. But uh, in the case of the Eisen case, this new perpendicular is just 1 and equal to. But in general, it's not. It's this object here. OK, but it's interesting that this has the same exp same exponent of the super integral chiral Potts model, although the super chiral Potts model is described only in terms of free terms. And here we have free power terms. Now, the specific heat, we can also calculate the specific heat in this case, and uh, this will give you by this derivative here. And if you calculate at the critical, uh, three, uh, the critical point, you expect that the specific heat scale as a function of the letter size with alpha over new parallel, new correlation in the parallel direction. Okay. The correlation exponent parallel direction. And uh, also from the spectra, you can calculate analytically and you get that it goes as 1 minus 2n, which means that this ratio here, that the alpha over new perpendicular, is 1 minus 2 over new. So, the next question is how to calculate this other exponent, new, per new parallel. Okay. Uh, the way to calculate, simple way to calculate, is that you look the specific heat as a function of lambda and see you have a peak. And the peak happens at a certain value of lambda that we call lambda c that depends on the particular size. For example, in the case of the missing something here, but this is, is for this case L equal 2. In the case of uh, N equal 2, in the Eisen case, as we change the size, the speak change positions, and if you look, the difference between those positions and uh, the, the, the critical point, which is 1, in this case, they should scale, in this case, goes with 1 over L, which means that the new parallel is 1 for the Eisen model. But for the other models, okay, you have uh, something similar, these exponents here. And uh, also, if you look for n equal 4, you have something like that, for n equal 10. And but at the end, what you get, this exponent here, and you get, you look at the log of these terms times n, you see always you have a straight line showing you that you have a really new parallel one for all the models. Okay, it's the same as the Eisen one. So <coughs> uh, we have the alpha, then is fixed by one over two over n because I knew we knew the ratio between alpha and new par uh, pa pa parallel. But since this is one, then we know that alpha is one minus two over n. This is the same as the chiral Potts model also. So somehow what we have, look at the model, the critical exponent is that we have those exponents here. Uh, this alpha, this exponent, is the same as the, the interacting Zn parafermionic, Fatier parafermionic, zamological parafermionic model. But we have now this, ot this other exponent here and here. And uh, this, and this will give actually the, the dynamic euclidic exponent. And they have the same exponent as the Zn superintegral chiral Potts model. The difference is that this model is much simpler to solve, to have a spectrum, than actually the, the superintegral chiral Potts model, because the restriction of free parafermions in this case is much easier. Actually, this superintegral uh, chiral Potts model was just uh, introduced by Gellert and the Rittenberg that passed away uh, about 40 years. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Sorry for that. Oh, sorry. No, but he said that's missing some of those, right? 
Yeah, but you say that there is other authors here this week. Yeah. Okay. Okay, sorry. Uh, okay. Now. Now I want to now I want to present you some surprise in these things. And physical surprise. Well, this model with open boundaries we saw, and uh, you have this, this parafermionic structure, very nice, you can calculate everything. So naturally we say, okay, let's close these things and see the, the closed boundary. It's not, it's not parafermionic, but let's look at it. Uh, so what we do is just take a, this Hamiltonian, and then I put just a connecting the last one to the first one. Uh, for A equal 1, we just have the periodic. For A equals 0, we have the open case. And then what I do, I calculate the energy per site that would be the thermodynamic limit you would expect for a bulk energy for these things. But then, surprise, what you get? We see that while the open boundary, we do analytically here, everything we can calculate, you have this energy. What you have, the periodic boundary has a completely thing, and as we increase, the end becomes even different. So we have something very different. Okay, uh, the bulk energy. I'm not speaking about free at the surface energy. I'm not speaking about uh, finite size scale in correction. I'm speaking about the bulk energy. They have completely very different. That becomes even worse. Of course, this calculation was j you may claim, oh, okay, just for a small lattice, but they clearly show you the trend, okay, that uh, they are very different, okay. So if you, I, this, if you do a, just a extrapolation of these things, what you get are these. So the energy per site on these two things, although you have just a link there, changes the book energy, okay. But this is something a surprise. So it's like, it's like you have a, this object here, uh, with with a certain uh, link, and you throw the link, you have the energy proportional to the whole system appearing again. So it's something very physically very different, okay, and completely unexpected. When I we got this result, I say, well, there is a mistake. Uh, the numerical uh, we have to do it. And we play a lot of time, make different ways to convince ourselves that it was the case. Uh, now to to appreciate this point. We look at the Hamiltonian now. I just put a small, this small parameter here. When A, I remember, when A equals zero, you just have the open. When A equals one, you have the periodic. Okay. Uh, I think we put a, an another notation here. This sigma are just the z that we have in the original uh, uh, Hamiltonian. So, so when so this is the, this is the so this point here are just you know the energy per site of the free boundary case. So you have a very well-defined value. But, and then this, all those curves here are just for different sizes. And as you see, as you, we change a little bit A, these energies per site, they change drastically. They try to change drastically. Okay. And actually, these points here would be the, the infinite, uh, uh, the, the will be the extrapolated result you get. So you see clearly that the periodic, the, the uh, open case is very special. As long as you have something, the physics is very different. But topologically, uh, open boundaries and a closed boundary, they are different. But we never saw this type of thing in a, in a quantum chain. Okay. And, uh, but here we see uh, it's very drastic. So, uh, <laughs> Just to have an idea, you compute the derivative of these things here, and you see here that this, this derivative at this point here uh, equals zero here, you see that grows exponentially. So it's something that, uh, so you have something very special here. Okay. Now, uh, so let's look at other things in the model. If you look, for example, <coughs> try to look at the correction to scale, you have the standard bulk energy, they, they are different. This, the black one is the free boundary, this is periodic. So you have the free energy you should expect in free boundary. Here you don't have, it's periodic, you don't have this term. But it, you do see the powers. The powers in the first one is just one plus two over n because you divide by L. 
So, so is this power. But here, this gamma, if you look, what you get is just gamma goes, depends on the n, and they're completely different from the other one, which is s1 plus 2 on n, like those numbers. And they are different. As, as you go with n, they tend to 2, but they are not exactly 2. So you see that uh, not only the ground state, uh, the energy per site, but also the corrections are different, like we are speaking with different, completely different model. Now, if you look the gap, now what you see is that the gap uh, is a function of n. You see for the the, the periodic the uh, the open case, the gaps goes with one over two, one minus two over n decreases, and you see that the gap in the other one just go, you know, like things uh, a constant one, one over l as as the number n goes to infinity. The first, thi the first thing you say, well, maybe this model when n goes to infinity becomes conform invariant or this type of thing. Okay, this is a possibility. Now, if you look at the specific heat now, with the boss boundaries, you see that actually the periodic you have, if you look, this is the specific heat number, you see that they separate at the LS size. This means that alpha equals zero for a all the n. Differently from the free boundaries. So you have a completely different, although the model is very similar one or the other, just one link, they have completely different physics. Okay. So, so we have here, I present you uh, uh, a class of models, which is this, which has some, uh, some characteristics. First of all, is non emission. But with a complex eigenspector, of course, we have a lot of emission, non-emission model that still you have PT invariance, you can have a real uh, spectrum. Here, no. Here you have this complex eigenspectrum. Uh, the ground state of this model, uh, you can, oh, at least the model with the lowest real part is, 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 uh, is real, okay, so it has this characteristic. And uh, and uh, it shares the same, uh, apparently the same properties as superintegrable chiral pots model in the case of the open chain, and give you when you put this periodic boundary. Okay, the first example that I know that the book ground state Hamiltonian energy are different from the depends on the boundary. Actually, in an example, these things happens. When you consider a vertex model, for example, to be, you have, not the Hamiltonian, you have that, which are the, the so models that we have uh, uh, domain wall boundary condition. This was already known that we have, uh, in this case, this, uh, the free energy depends on the boundary, which is, would be equivalent in the uh, quantum chain of this observation. But a quantum chain, this is the first thing. So the question is now, is that uh, to, to go in and to understand the physics here that probably has to do with some topological thing like that. Of course, we are speaking about a non-emission Hamiltonian, but nevertheless, the physics is there. And uh, with this, I thank you. <laughs>